Hey guys, Richard Older here, and welcome to the channel. Before we get going, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. Today we're going to take a look at an evolutionary shootout between the 4.3 liter V6. Actually, it's not just a 4.3 liter V6. We have two 4.3 liter V6s. We have one 4.3 liter V8 and one 4.2 liter inline six cylinder. We're going to go through the progression of the way that I tested all these motors and see how over the years GM has made this kind of displacement better and better. Let's check it out. So we're going to start off our comparison, the evolution of our 4.3 liter, and we also have a 4.2 liter, but very, very similar. We're going to start off with the Vortec version of the 4.3 liter, and it lasted for a long time, ending in 1995. So the 4.3 liter, this one is the V6 that's thought of as three quarters of a small block Chevy V8, because it shares both the bore and stroke of the 350. It is a four inch bore and a 3.48 inch stroke. This particular version was an L35. So this was kind of the last hurrah and it was rated between 195 and 200 horsepower depending on the application and also made 260 foot pounds of torque. So it's fairly torquey. It was a good combination of the L35, 262 cubic inches. It had a 9.1 to one static compression, had the Vortec head on it, had a had the CFI fuel injection. When I ran it, we did not run it with that fuel injection. So you get your comments ready because there's a lot of stuff here that's not exactly stock. But these are the way that I had it and these are the way that I ran. So we ran this thing with an Edelbrock dual plane intake manifold and a matching Edelbrock carburetor. We also also ran this 4.3 liter with the stock exhaust manifolds and just extension pipes basically kind of a you know free flowing dual exhaust if you will but with the stock exhaust manifolds I did not have long tube headers for this application but run in this manner our 4.3 liter V6 produced 200 and seven or so horsepower and 285 foot-pounds of torque. I didn't load it down low enough where we probably would have had the the peak torque number, but it's going to be very close to that because what's going to happen is that's going to roll over now the other way because we're very, very close to the torque peak there. I was surprised that this didn't make more power and maybe it would have with the factory long runner fuel injection manifold as opposed to the dual plane. We've run that dual plane a lot because it's one of the few that are even available for this 4.3 liter. But let's let's real quickly take a look and see how this compares to another 4.3 liter that came about the same time. In fact, it ended, I think, in 96. It's called the L99 and a lot of people don't know about it. It's a 4.3 liter, but it's a V8. It's a Gen 2 LT1, that's right, the 350. It's an LT1 base motor, but with a much smaller bore and stroke combination. So this had a 3.736 bore and a three inch stroke. So it shared the three inch stroke of the previous DZ302 and the 283. This one had, I can't find exactly what the static compression ratio is. It varies from 9.3 all the way up to 9.9. .9. So if you guys can find out what the static compression ratio is, please make sure to let me know in the comments. This thing was rated at 200 horsepower, so very similar to the 4.3 liter V6, and 245 foot-pounds of torque, actually slightly less than the V6, and I think that that's probably because of the very, very short runner LT1 style intake manifold. But here's what happened when I ran this, and we also ran this with <laughs> a dual plane intake manifold. And you can see, I'm going to move me down here so I'm out of the way. You can see that the, the little V8 actually produced more power. We ran it with a dual plane GM intake manifold designed for the LT1 and a 650 Holley carburetor. The 4.3 liter V8 also had long tube headers on it because we had basically it's just a small block. Notice that if we take a look below 3600 RPM, the little V8 made a bunch less torque than the little V6 did. And again, you know, I'd like to point out that it's got to be the short rudder intake manifold, but this one didn't have a short rudder intake manifold. It actually had a dual plane intake manifold. So that's fairly interesting. Um, now let's take a look at the final one before we step up all the way up to the LV3. The next one in our evolution is the 4.2 liter inline six cylinder. 
Now that we've taken a look at the 4.3 liter Vortec V6 and the L99 4.3 liter V8, let's step up into the modern era, let's say. And we have a combination that was last produced in 2009, and that is the Atlas inline six cylinder. So it is a 4.2 liter 4200. They also make it in a five cylinder and a four cylinder version, which is kind of cool. I'm hoping to be able to run those sometime as well. But the 4200 was, was a completely different bore and stroke. It was a 3.66 by 402 bore. It had a 10 to 1 static compression, obviously aluminum four valve. It was the designation was LL8 on the motor, and it ranged in power from 275 on the early versions up to 291 horsepower and between 275 and 277 foot-pounds of torque. Not a big change in torque from the two configurations. It displaced 254 cubic inches, so less than the 262 to 263, depending on how you're rounding these things up or down. But it was slightly smaller, higher compression, four-valve head, and obviously variable cam timing. So it did very well. And let's take a look at the 4200, and we can see how it compared to the other two. It's quite a bit better. <laughs> it produced 291 horsepower and peak torque checked in at right at 300 foot pounds of torque. Still, still making more torque than horsepower. Pretty good indication that it's a, that it's a factory motor where, you know, they're a little bit more concerned with torque uh, production than they are like peak horsepower. And all of these are still making peak power below 6,000 RPM, even the 4200. But it did very well and is making good power. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we uh, stepped up now to something <laughs> even more modern, which is the LV1 and LV3. The LV1 is the, uh, and LV3 are both 4.3 liter. They're LT based, so the newest engine family that came after the LS motor. They're direct injected. They have a static compression ratio of 11.0 to 1, so the highest compression of all of the combinations. The LV1 is the non-DOD version, uh, and, and then the LV3 has DOD. They both have variable cam timing, which is good. They The LV3 is rated at 285 horsepower and 305 foot-pounds of torque. So a little bit, um, actually a little bit less than the 4200 in terms of the rated power output, but much more on the torque. Um, 262 cubic inches and is being produced currently, so 2022. So let's take a look and see. This was a test just run recently by the guys at Brian Tooley Racing. And you can see <laughs> it's a big bold line, but it's basically making a lot more power and a lot more torque kind of everywhere compared to the 4200. And the 4200 also was run with a, we ran it both with a stock exhaust manifold and with a tubular header that was made actually to mount a turbo on it. And we varied the cam timing on the 4200. Um, unfortunately, the LV3 was not run with variable cam timing. They had problems with the phaser when they were running it, and they're going to redo this, this baseline test. But I think what will happen is you'll see that this thing makes even more power than it made here. It's doing fairly well. It's rated at 285. It made right at a little over 300. It made 316 or 17 and 356 foot pounds of torque. So you can see doing very well. And it just goes to show you that, you know, not surprisingly that the evolution of this kind of displacement, the OEMs, the, the OEM manufacturers, in this case GM, they get better and better at making the different power levels. They can, they can do what they need to do in terms of, because it's never just about power when you're developing these motors for any of these. It's about fuel mileage and warranty issues and longevity and um, emissions. You know, there's a lot of things that are wrapped up in whatever this design is. But as we can see, they've managed to improve the breed dramatically on this kind of displacement. It kind of makes me wonder what's going to happen next. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little venture? Taking a look at our four different versions of the 4.3 liter slash 4.2 liter versions. This was very cool. Now, we had two 4.3 liter conventional kind of V6s. We had, they were the bookends. We had the starting Vortec motor, which made the least amount of power and certainly rated at the least amount of power. And then we had the LV1, LV3, which is another 4.3 liter V6 that made the most amount of power. It's direct injected and it had lots of cool stuff going on. Basically, it's a small version of the LT motors, the latest iteration of the performance 
performance versions offered by GM. In the middle are two other very cool ones and completely different. We have the 4.3 liter V8, which a lot of guys don't even know about. I've had arguments with people telling me, hey, look, there's a 4.3 liter V8 I'm testing. No, you don't know what you're talking about. It's got to be a 4.3 liter V6. GM only made that because they recognized the three quarters of the V8 of the 350. But I tell them, look, you need to do a search on L99 and chances are the testing that I did will probably come up and you'll see it is a version of the Gen 2 LT1, just much, much smaller. So we got a 4.3 liter V8 and also the 4.2 liter Atlas inline six cylinder, very close in displacement, slightly smaller, but it also benefits from overhead cam, variable cam diming, four valves per cylinder. Although take a look at the video of me snapping all the head bolts off of that thing when I'm trying to remove the head. Arbiter holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.